Hello viewers, uh, my name is Brooke Kiffley with the Thomas Edison Writing Center and in this screencast we're going to be discussing MLA style and the specific guidelines with regard to formatting and citations both in text and um, in the works cited page. Uh, throughout the screencast we'll be referring to this handout that I made uh, which can be found at the Edison Writing Center. Um, and we'll also pull up a document and demonstrate the specific points that are discussed in this presentation. So MLA style is a citation style of essays in the humanities. This typically includes classes uh, in, in the English department or in the arts. When formatting your paper, uh, there are specific points that you want to keep in mind um, to ensure that you're following uh, the guidelines of MLA. So you want to begin by double spacing your text um, and using a legible 12 point font, um, in this case uh, Times New Roman. Uh, in the upper left hand corner you want to list your name, your instructor's name, uh, the course, and the date that the assignment is due. Uh, all of which should be double spaced and in the same 12 point Times New Roman font. Uh, you also want to make sure that your margins, the margins of your document are set to 1 inches on all sides and that you indent the first line of each paragraph. Uh, lastly, you want to be sure to create a header that numbers all the pages in the upper right hand corner. So it's pretty simple, so we'll go and demonstrate um, this on a sample Word document. So you want to begin by, oh, I'm sorry, you want to begin by having your name um, teacher's name, course, and the date, 21st. So if you notice, this is single spaced, so you want to be sure that you double space your text. So you can go under page layout, paragraph, and under line spacing, choose double space. So this will automatically double space everything in your paper. Um, now also going back and making sure that your font is uh, correct is also important. So you want to be sure that you're using 12 point Times New Roman font. Now uh, you also want to be sure that your margins are set to one inch. So in Word document, um, your document will automatically be set to have one inch margins on each side but in the case that it isn't, you want to be sure to select the normal. Uh, you also want to insert the page number in the upper right hand corner. Um, you can find this by going under insert page number and selecting the top of page option and option 3. Now to the left of the page number you want to have your last name um, so that every page will consecutively, consecutively have your last name and the corresponding page number. So we've seen, we can see that we've, um, we've pretty much covered um, most of the specific guidelines that you want to keep in mind. Um, now a point that isn't discussed on this handout is your title. So when titling your paper you want to make sure that it's centered um, however, you do not um, want to use any um, bold or underline or italicize or a bigger font for that matter. You want to be sure that your title is simple and um, follows the same style as the rest of your paper. Now, when writing your actual paper, you want to be sure to indent um, the beginning of each paragraph to indicate that you're starting a new paragraph. So, so pretty simple. Um, now that we've tackled the formatting portion of MLA style, we'll go into citations. So um, there are two parts of citing a source or an author or anything for that matter um, in MLA style. There's in-text citations 
also known as parenthetical citations, and there is out-of-text citations, also known as the works cited page. So um, there are two, two options um, which can be used when citing a source in text. So MLA format follows the author page method of in-text citations. This means that the author's last name and the page number from which the quotation or phrase is taken must appear. So we see this in the second example here, where you will introduce the quote or the paraphrase and have the author's last name and the page number in the parentheses with the punctuation following the, the parentheses. Um, a second option is the author's name may appear either in the sentence itself or in parentheses following the quotation or paraphrase, but the page number should always appear in the parentheses, not in the text of your sentence. So here we introduce um, the author. So Woodsworth stated that, um, and then we have the quote, and then we have the page number with the punctuation following. So we will now demonstrate this with a sample of our own. So Bob Now again, this is just a sample, um, and and um, so we see that we introduce the author or the historian in this case. Um, we introduce his profession and his relevance to the topic, and then we go into um, presenting the quote and having the page number following. Now, in the other option, um, we can introduce just the quote or the paraphrase itself. So the Civil War and in this case um, this wasn't something that we knew, so we'll have to give credit to um, the person who we got this information from by properly citing. So there are two forms of uh, citing in text, um, each serving a different purpose. Um, with this, you typically want to introduce your historian or author, um, build their credibility, state who they are, their relevance to the field, and then introduce a quote. Um, following that, um, anytime you want to introduce a quote or a fact from that source, um, all you do is simply uh, provide their last name and the page number, and the reader will have an understanding of who this person is. Uh, so the second part of citations are works cited page. Um, now there are specific points that you want to keep in mind when citing or when formatting your works cited page. Um, and in the second part of this screencast, we'll be discussing um, how to use Noodle tools and how to properly um, utilize uh, this source so that you can uh, efficiently uh, structure your works cited page.